Modern microfinance traces its roots back to the economist Muhammad Yunus. He ended up winning a Nobel Peace Prize for it. So it became a very big popular idea. At its core, it is supposed to lift poor people out of poverty by enabling them to become entrepreneurs, mainly focused on women in the developing world. All they need is money. Money is the oxygen for entrepreneurship. Microfinance in the early 2000s was viewed as the silver bullet. You give money to poor people, let them take small loans, and it helps them become self-sufficient. That was the promise, that was the dream. But once it started and people saw that there was a lot of money to be made there, it was like ringing the dinner bell of a bank in Mexico. At an IPO that all of a sudden had a valuation worth $2 billion. As more and more private investors piled in, you saw the lending practices deteriorating, the debt collection practices getting more and more extreme. They were just looking to make a buck. Hundreds of millions of dollars of public money for foreign development aid were instead flowing to lenders who were employing predatory debt collection and lending practices. We did a lot of digging. You know, we filed freedom of information requests. We got private records. In Cambodia, we found multiple instances of women whose land had been forcibly expropriated after they'd fallen behind on their debt repayment in Georgia we came across microfinance companies that were reporting indebted women to the judicial authorities. In Sri Lanka, we documented dozens of instances of women committing suicide because they just saw no way out. I view our role as holding the government accountable. If you're giving U.S. government billions of dollars of public money for poverty eradication, the government should be doing due diligence and make sure that it's not doing more harm than good to the people it's supposed to help. But I think what David and I hope to achieve with this would be that some of these developed banks and commercial banks would look again at their lending practices. In Cambodia, the World Bank is looking at changing its loan policies there. In the U.S., there has been some push to look at some of the loans that they give. So that's the conversation we wanted to start, and there's a lot more that needs to be done.